Good morning and welcome back to our unit on trigonometry. Today we're continuing 7.6, solving simple trigonometric equations. Please make sure you take out a blank sheet of paper, fold it into four boxes, and follow along with me as I do the notes. You should have A through D labeled, your name at the top, box your answers as you move along. Make sure to answer the questions in Edpuzzle as they arise, and um, you'll have four problems for homework. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our next lesson in the trig unit, solving trigonometric equations, simple ones. So in, previous, in a previous uh, lesson, we were evaluating trig equations. So I would give you sine, let's say, of 60 degrees. Now, if you did the work, you'd find out that the answer is radical 3 over 2. Well, what I'm going to do what we're going to be doing in this lesson is we're going to go backwards. This time for solving, I'm going to give you the answer and I'll be asking you to tell me the angle that makes that answer true, right? So what is the angle that if I were to find sine, right, if I were to get y over r, would give me an answer of radical 3 over 2. So we're going backwards now. And that's what solving is all about. So here's a rundown of everything we've gone over in this unit so far. On the left, let's call this part 1. I have my definitions. Now in the last section here, let's call this part 4, we're talking about our um, coordinate plane. So in quadrant 1, note that x is positive and y is also positive, right? Any point in this quadrant would have to be a positive x, positive y. So then in quadrant four, we have a positive x because we're going to the right and a negative y because we're going down. Now, that all is very intuitive and very simple, of course, but why are we reviewing something as easy as the signs of x and y? Well, in this lesson, this lesson will demand that you are very comfortable with all of your signs. So for example, if I told you sine theta is a positive number, let's say, uh, positive one half. Okay, I said sine theta is positive one half. Your job is to figure out what possible angle will give me a sine, a y over r value of positive one half. So your first step is to figure out which quadrant or quadrants this angle can be in. So let me show you how. Well, sine, what do we know about sine? Sine is y over r. Now, I know that r is always positive. So if sine is positive one half, that means y is also going to be positive. So watch this. That narrows my field down. I know that I have to be in quadrant one because this is where my y is positive and r is positive. If I put them over each other, I'll get a positive number. But that's not the only place. There's another quadrant where y is also positive and r is positive. Can you figure it out? If you said quadrant 2, you were correct. In quadrant 2, y is also positive and r is also positive. In fact, isn't r positive everywhere? Isn't the only thing we really need to focus on our y being positive? Because right? R is automatically positive no matter what. So we just need to pick the quadrants where our Y value is positive. And that's going to happen above the axis. Let's try another one. Let's say cosine theta equaled, make it negative one half. So you'd start with your definition. What do we know about cosine? Well, cosine, uh, the formula is X over R. Now notice, we have a negative in front. So the thing about negatives is they can float, right? They can be, that negative could be with the one on top, like that. It could be with the two in the denominator, like that also. So our question is, where does that negative belong? Does it belong in the numerator or does it belong in the denominator? Well, what do we know about R? 
R is always positive. So this is impossible. The negative can't be with the two because R is always positive. That means that that negative has to belong up here. So I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to cross it out. And that means that R is positive, but that means that X has to be negative. Well, which two quadrants is X negative in? Think. X is negative on the left side of the graph, so it could be over here, right? That'd be a point like negative three comma one. Or it could be in this quadrant. That'd be like negative three comma negative one, let's say. So the two quadrants would be two and three. Okay. So now that we've gone over the big ideas, we have everything we need to start solving. Let's jump in. First question says, sine of some angle t. And here they're telling us t is between 0 and 2 pi. Translation, t is between 0 and 360 degrees, so anywhere on the circle. Use the coordinate plane to draw the reference angles and find the value of t. Okay, so t represents an angle. Let's begin. So step one is always label x, y, r. Well, sine is y over r. Step two, draw angle in appropriate quadrants. Well, what do we know about R. R is always positive. That means that if I want y over r to be positive, y has to be positive. So I'm focusing on where is y positive. I'll draw two separate angles. y is positive above the x-axis. So one angle will be here, one angle will be here. Okay, next, step three. We're going to drop the perpendiculars to the x-axis, as always, make our triangles, and then label the sides. I'm dropping the perpendicular, dropping the perpendicular, and now let's label. So my r is 2, and my y is radical 3, and indeed they are both positive, so I can just check my drawing, see that it makes sense. And now that I know my sides are radical 3 and 2, we need to figure out the missing side. Well. If this is radical 3 and 2, the missing side is a 1 because that comes from a 30, 60, 90 triangle. I recognize those numbers, right? You should be very, very comfortable. If I say, here are two sides, you should figure out the third one. So coming back to our problem. Okay, we know that the missing side is a 1, but I'm going to be careful here. That should be a negative 1 because it's going backwards. And now, step 4. Uh, actually, we're going to label the sides. Yeah, and then step four, label the reference angle, which is the angle inside right here. Here's the good news. Once you figure out one reference angle, the other one is always the same. So what goes across from the radical three? Well, going backwards, that would be 60 degrees. So if this is 60 degrees, then this has to be 60 degrees. Guys, we're almost done. We just need to find our final answer now. So the first angle... Remember, we measure angles like this, from 0 degrees, and then we open upwards. So if this is my angle, and it's in quadrant 1, the answer is just 60 degrees. So our first answer is 60 degrees. But for my second angle, I actually have to do some math, because I need this angle. So I don't want the 60. I want to know what this remaining piece is. So here's how we do the math. If... You're in quadrant two, so nod your head if you agree. Isn't from here all the way to here, isn't that entire angle there 180 degrees? Yes? Well, if that's 180 degrees, but I'm going to be smaller than that, I won't, I'm going to subtract the 60 to get a smaller angle. So the math that I'm going to do is 180 minus 60 degrees because if I do 180 plus 60 then I'll be going further I'll be getting a bigger angle but if I do 180 minus 60 then I'll go backwards and have the smaller angle which is what we're interested in here indeed 180 minus 60 is 120 degrees and that's our second angle so we found our two angles now 
in some instances, I may ask you to give me the radian measure, not the degrees. So converting to radians is just one extra step, super easy, no big deal at all. Well, 60 degrees, we know that that's just from our conversions. That's pi over 3. And I know that 120 degrees is, it's always, if this is pi over 3, your other answer will also have a pi over 3. You just have to figure out what's the number in front. So 120 is the same as 2 times 60. So that means it's 2 times pi over 3. Do the math in your head and convince yourself that's correct. Pi over 3 is 60 times 2 is 120. So I've converted these now to radians, and I'm done. So these are the steps for solving simple trig equations. After we find the reference angle in step 4, our final answer is to find our actual angle answers. And here's how we do it. If you're in quadrant 1, your reference angle is just your answer. If you're in quadrant two, you're gonna have to do 180 minus your reference angle. If you're in quadrant three, you'll do 180 plus your reference angle. And then finally, if you're in quadrant four, you'll do 360 minus the reference angle. So make sure you have these notes down. Pause the video, take them down, and then let's try the next example. Okay, problem two says cosine. We're going to speed it up, by the way. B says cosine of some angle. It could be T. You could call it theta. It doesn't matter. Equals negative one half. Well, let's follow our steps. First, let's label. Cosine is X over R. So R is 2, X is 1. Next, draw your angle in the appropriate quadrants. So we know that we could have up to two answers. Now the question is, where does that negative belong? Does it belong with the x on top or the r on the bottom? Well, I know r is always positive, so that means that that negative belongs with the x. So I need to know where is x negative? Well, my x's are negative in, on these two sides, right to the left of the axis. So I'll draw one angle here, and I'll draw one angle here nice and big. Next step, let's drop the perpendiculars to the x-axis and label. My x is negative 1, my x is negative 1. The r is positive 2, the r is positive 2. Ooh, if I see a 1 and a 2, what's the missing side? Well, if you said f uh, 1, you're mistaking this for 45, 45, 90. But a 45, 45, 90 would have a radical 2 as the hypotenuse. So this is actually a 30, 60, 90 because it's 1, radical 3, 2. 1, radical 3, 2, if you examine your notes. So now that we have all of our sides labeled, step 4 says find the reference angle. So if this is radical 3, then what should be across from it? It would be a 60 degrees. Across from radical 3, we always put 60 degrees. And we're almost done. Last step is to find our actual answers. So remember, our actual answers means we're measuring from here and opening up to that angle. Well, we actually did this one last time. We know that in quadrant two, we have to do the math 180 minus the reference angle. And so that angle is 120 degrees. But for this angle, we have to go to 180 and then add 60 degrees because it's further. So we're going to do 180 plus 60 degrees, and that lines up with these notes here. When we add 60, we get 240 degrees, and so these are our two answers in degrees. But we want to convert them to radians. So if this is our first answer, theta 1, this is our second answer, theta 2, let's convert them to radians. Here's the little shortcut. Use your reference angle as a guide. If your reference angle is 60, Break this up into a multiple of 60. So this is 2 times 60. This is 4 times 60. If you do 2 times 60, that's 2, and 60 is pi over 3. That's our answer. For 240 degrees, that's 4 times 60, or 4 times pi over 3. And these are our two answers. If I took cosine of 2 pi over 3, I would end up with negative one-half. 
Same if I took cosine of 4 pi over 3, because notice the x on both of these angles is negative 1, and the r on both of these angles is a positive 2. So that's why I get the same answer. C says tangent of some angle t equals 1. So our first step always is to label. I know tangent is y over x. Since I don't see a fraction, I'll put this over 1. And now I notice I want y over x to end up being a positive number because this is 1. There's no sign in front, so it's positive. Now there's two ways to get a positive number here. y and x can both be positive. So that would be in quadrant 1. Or can you think of the other quadrant we went over at the beginning of our lesson? Well, this doesn't work. You can't have a negative over a positive because that would give me a negative number, which I don't want. But if they're both negative, then they will cancel and give me the positive that I'm looking for. So indeed, that's what we're ne we'll need to do. We'll have to put our second angle where x and y are both negative. That's the other place where tangent becomes positive. Check it out. In quadrant 1, let's label x and y are both 1 and 1, positive 1, positive 1. In quadrant 3, x is negative 1 and y is negative 1. And when I divide them, it will give me the positive number. Continuing on, look at your sides, label the third side. So if this is 1, 1, this will be a radical 2, because I'm recognizing this as a 45, 45, 90 triangle. You don't need to label the outside uh, angle, just the reference angle in the center. So that's 45, 45, 90. In our last step, we just need to um, give the final answer angles. So we currently know that our reference angles are 45, but we want to know the f actual angles. Well, in quadrant one, that's just going to stay 45 degrees. But in quadrant 3, we have to go to 180 and then add the 45 so we can get this large angle. So we'll do the math. 180 plus 45 is 225 degrees. So our first answer will be pi over 4. And like I said before, use the reference angle as a guide. So if this is a 45 degree reference angle, my final answer will be some multiple of pi over 4. And if you remember, this is 1 pi over 4, this is 3 pi over 4, and this here is 5 pi over 4. You can double check by multiplying 45 degrees times 5, and indeed you'll get 225. So this is our first answer, we'll call it theta 1. This is our second answer, we'll call it theta 2. So as you can see, it doesn't take too long once you get the groove. Okay, so step one, cotangent is x over y. We're labeling. Let's put this guy over one. As we said before, that negative can float. It can be in the top or it can be in the bottom. In this case, the negative could be with the x, and then the y would be positive, or the negative could be with the y and then x would be positive. In both scenarios, my answer will end up being a negative radical 3. So I know that my two quadrants will be where x is negative and y is positive. That's quadrant 2. Or where x is positive and y is negative. That's quadrant 4. Dropping the perpendiculars, and then let's label x is negative radical 3 and y is positive 1. Or x is positive radical 3 and y is negative 1. So you might be wondering, um, how come in previous problems that negative couldn't migrate top and bottom? For example, we did a problem earlier. Let's say it was like cosine theta equals negative one-half. And we said that negative has to be with the x. The reason why that negative couldn't be with the r is because we know r is always positive. So that made our life super easy. But here we have x and y. Both of them can have different signs. And so we have to take into account that the negative could be on top or the negative could be with the y on the bottom. Here it had to be on top because r is always positive. Let's continue. 
if I see a 1 radical 3, my missing side is a 2, and I know I'm dealing with a 30, 60, 90. This time, I have a 1 opposite the angle. So that's going to be a 30 degrees here, 30 degree reference angle. Final step, let's get our final answers in degrees. In quadrant 2, what math should we do? Well, that's less than 180, so we'll do 180 minus 30 and get 150 degrees. And then now in the fourth quadrant, we want this angle, like this whole big angle. It's really large. You're not going to use 180 here. You're going to use 360 and then subtract 30 from it to get 330 degrees, which is that big angle, just 30 degrees away from a full circle. In my last step, I want to find radians. So using the reference angle, whoops, using the reference angle as a guide, since that's 30, I know my reference angle will be some multiple of pi over 6, because that's 30 degrees. So to figure out, uh, since I have 150, you have to say, well, 30 times what gives me 150? The answer is 5. So this is 5 pi over 6. Let's try that again. I know the reference angle is 30, so this is going to be 30 times something. Well, 30 times 11 gives me 330, so this is going to be 11 pi over 6. The pi over 6 represents the 30, and then we're just multiplying by the 11. And those are our two answers. Thanks for following. Don't forget you have four problems for homework. Here they are.